Hi everybody. Um, I, you know, I've gotten some comments on some canes that I make, um, that are all out of scrap clay, but people always think they're so cool. So I was just going to show you today how to do them. They're really, really easy. You just need to, um, I got to find some here. I know I have a bunch. Um, anyways, you just need to take some scrap clay. I'm going to show you in a bit exactly how to do it but you will need a uh, tissue blade or a regular blade, um, whatever you use to cut polymer clay with. Um, I like to clean my scrap a little bit with um, some alcohol and a baby wipe, but that's your choice. But yeah, these are, the, these are some fun, like I saved them as veneers, but these are some really fun, beautiful, swirly cane scrappy pieces that you can do in a matter of minutes. It does not take long at all. The main thing you just need to know is <clears throat> you don't want to over mix your colors because you won't get really defined swirly um, stripes or swirls in there. Um, oh, shoot. Whoops. Sorry, I bumped my camera. Ah, it's shaking everywhere. Um, here's another example and just some different hues. And you can, honestly, you can mirror them. You can, you can do whatever you want with them. But um, I just, I just kind of, I love playing with scrap clay almost as much as I like trying to make other canes that I follow in tutorials. Um, just because it's, my brain is always going towards color and organic. That's just kind of how my artwork has always been um, from the time I started drawing to all the way up to now and I'm 50 years old. So anyway, um, yeah. And the, if you haven't found this trick yet, veneers or any flat, pieces that you want to save work great in a portfolio book and I just got this at an art materials place um, that is meant for housing actual artwork to show to potential clients or things like that if you're wanting to get a job but you could use a scrapbook you could use just a photo book whatever you want anyways I have a pile of scraps here that I kind of tend to try to make the color blends a little on more similar when I'm going to do sorrel canes um, I don't necessarily really like the ones that are all like, like if I were to do all of this clay right here, it, it would look okay. Um, I just feel like the, the swirls when I do this one looks better if they're a little more in the same hue line. The other thing that I make sure I do when I have scrap clay and I'm going to chop it up is, um, I, I make sure that I grab all my scrap white and my scrap black because I want that contrast in there. The <laughs> main thing is you want to chop it up and when you squish it together, that's the big, that, I'll show you. So this is what you do. You take your scrap clay, get a pile of scrap in some similar colors. Make sure you add some white, at least white or black or both. Um, and don't worry about it getting too, I mean, you don't want to over mix because it'll get too muddy, but watch what I do. So I just go through and chop up this clay. I'm just using my little four inch blade. So sometimes I have to move the clay around cause I'll get it all stuck in my fingernails. But <clears throat> I'll just go through and chop this up. As long as your clay isn't too soft, if it's um, really soft and doesn't wanna like come apart because this is already conditioned, it's already been rolled into different canes and stuff like that, um, it can tend to get really mushy. I don't know about you guys, but my hands run really hot and so um, I usually have, even in the wintertime, I live in Minnesota and I even have my bedroom window open. Not very much because my husband will freeze, but um, I just, I, I don't know. I can do hot if I'm at a beach. <laughs> if, I, if there's an ocean nearby, give me hot. That's fine. But I can't. Um, and then again, I can't wait to move out of Minnesota, but I want to go to the Pacific Northwest and it's not that hot there either. Anyway, uh, yeah, I have hot hands. Um, this clay right here, I, I used to primarily only use Primo clay when I started, which was back in, well, I mean, I did Palmer clay years ago, but nothing ever for a business. Um, and then, so last February, I, I made, stumbled upon this opportunity to make my mom a necklace for her 90th birthday. And I found s s some scrap clay in my craft closet from like seven years ago when my kids were much younger. 
and I dug through there because I just couldn't find a bead I really wanted for her. She's got these really intense blue, like ocean blue, almost ice blue, like this color blue mixed with the lighter teal. That's the color of my mom's eyes. And I wanted to match a stone with that and I couldn't really find anything. I didn't, I don't know. I went to Hobby Lobby and Michaels and just couldn't find what I was looking for at the time. And I had not had any inclination of playing with clay. Um, I was working in wooden wire. That was my medium at the time. Last year I was doing all sorts of things with wooden wire. Anyway, I, I got the scrap clay out. I found enough blues. I took some seashells from my craft closet, crushed those up with a hammer in between some like old denim, added these crushed seashells to this blue mix that I made and turned it into this really beautiful centerpiece bead for a necklace that I made her. And uh, oh my gosh, when she got it, she was like, wow, what is that stone? That is so cool. And I was like, yeah, it's clay, mom, I made it. So I don't know, it just kind of got me into really wanting to play. My point being is that now, this is a mix right here of some Primo and Fimo. Um, because my hands run so hot, I have learned through many different articles and um, watching other people and everything else, Fimo Professional is a great stiff clay that works really well for people with hot hands. Um, the uh, Kato clay is also good for that. Um, I know I wanted to try Cernit really badly and um, one of the um, distributors was saying, you don't, if you have hot hands, you don't wanna use Cernit because it gets really, really soft, like softer than Primo. Anyway, so you can kind of see, this is actually a little softer right now. It's kind of sticking together more than I would usually like, but I don't have time to throw this in the fridge because I'm gonna keep going. So it's okay. It doesn't really matter. It's just better if you can get chunks that you can really separate so that you want your colors in your pile to be distributed really evenly. Uh, or as evenly as you can, because it makes for better striping. You don't want, um, yeah, You do, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but that's what I do anyway. So I just mix all this up and I just try not to touch it. I mean, I try not to squish too much because I want the whites to be white and the blacks to be, you know, I want the colors to remain how they are um, and not get too mixed when I put them through my pasta machine. So I don't feel like I have any massively huge chunks of any one color in here. So I'm gonna just mush this together and I'm gonna start just by kind of gathering it up in a ball and I'll just squish a little bit. Okay, and I'm not, I don't, I really just don't want to do anything crazy to this cane. So I start by mushing it and then I'm gonna grab my little acrylic plate and I just go like this and rock it back and forth, turn, 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 and then swish down from the top and turn it over and from the bottom. And woo. <clears throat> You'll have to excuse me if this if my work surface looks funny. Um, I <laughs> I have to work from my bed a lot because I have a really bad back, and I have a beautiful studio that my husband built me with this great chair that costs a fortune. And I still end up if I work out there for too long, I end up in a lot of back pain, or my back will go out. So I um have these portable studios set up all over my house where if I'm in, in my room and wanting to watch TV and my back is sore, I can just sit in my bed. And I have this little tile on my lap with a pillow underneath and got my pasta machine right over here on this little um, TV tray table thing that I've stabilized. <laughs> yeah, you know, us artists, we gotta do what we gotta do, right? Anyways, once I get it all kind of mushed together and I'm liking that the colors are pretty well distributed. I mean, I like that I, I see some chunks of purple kind of all throughout. I just want the colors to, I don't wanna see any like big massive chunks of one color anywhere. Then you just take, when you're satisfied with your block, your cube basically, and it's up to you. I, you know, when you're when you're gonna mix this in, it doesn't really matter if you wipe off the outside with the alcohol, because yes, things are gonna be kind of muddy, not muddy, but you know, dirty. This would get a lot cleaner if I wiped it. However, um, once I slice it and roll it, you will never see any of that stuff. So, I usually just go into about quarter inch slices, 
and I'll just go straight down. It's always fun too. I usually tend to play and make, make, uh, um, what do you call those? Hello. Um, Natasha beads, but most of the time I don't end up with anything that I want to keep. So I just slice it. And for today's tutorial, I'm just going to keep slicing. So I just go through, slice it about a quarter inch just because I want a big slab. I like working with bigger slabs. I like being able to have the opportunity to get enough of a pattern if I'm going quick and not worry about like, oh, that's such a cool pattern I got in the end and then not have enough. Sometimes they don't turn out that great. Sometimes the color mix that I do, I'm like, ooh, that'll look cool and then I'll run it through the pasta machine and the stripes just get way too blended and it won't do what I want it to do in the end, so. But you also, after you get these squished together, you can kind of see, I, it doesn't matter how you put them. I'm just squishing them in. Because to start with, it doesn't matter which way anything's going. The pasta machine will tell you once you run it through once, it's going to start to take these little chunks of clay and turn them into an elongated shape. And then you want to continue to mix in that same direction to get your stripes. So, but this is really thick. I mean, my pasta machine could probably handle it. It's an Atlas 150, but I also know, I've been warned so many times, just be careful with the thickness of clay because you don't want to offset the bearings or the gear in the um, in the uh, roller winder. <laughs> my brain, you guys, I'm going on such a very little amount of sleep, so bear with me. Anyway, um, I need to find my acrylic roller that I just had. Where'd it go? There it is. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to roll this just a little bit just to thin it out a little. Just so I don't hurt my pasta machine. And also when you squish those chunks together or those slices together, you want to be able to um, not have them come apart when you go run it through the machine. So just gonna flip it like this. And now it almost looks like an old, I mean, a really pretty colored, but old like 1960s linoleum floor or whatever, you know, cause that's just all that is right there. So now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put this through my pasta machine this way, long ways. Um, but I usually tend to work in thinner strips. It's just like width wise, it just works better for me. You guys can do obviously whatever you want. So I'm gonna go through my thickest setting and I'm gonna run it through. So this is one time through, just like that. Now I'm going to take my little cutter and just cut it in half. Flip it. This is also what I do when I wanna make um, Bargello or those uh, 3D, um, here's a sample, but those like 3D pattern um, squares that you can make with stripes, things like that. Um, but yeah, this is the same kind of thing that I do. But I'm gonna only slice, I'm gonna slice it once, fold it over and then run it through again. That's the second time through. And now, because I'm liking these colors, I am gonna save half for either the Bargello type um, square type ones, because I really like the contrasting of this, and I'm just gonna set that aside. And I'll just keep working with this one. So, um, I'm gonna roll this. Sometimes, it just depends on how everything is looking. So I'm gonna roll this through one more time, but I'll just cut it and flip it. and run it through. And now I'm starting to see some stripes. There's that big black thing in there. That's not gonna matter because we're gonna roll it up and it's gonna be that spiral that you want. Okay, so um, now I've just, I've rolled it out. I rolled it out one more time and I have these nice contrasting stripes through here. And this was, I put, I went from the thickest setting down to number three on my pasta machine. 
I actually started on <laughs> number five accidentally. So this side right here is just a little bit thinner than the rest of it, but it doesn't matter. So now I'm just gonna take and roll it like you would a jelly roll or a um, bullseye cane or anything like that. You just wanna make sure that you roll it tight from the beginning so you don't get any air trapped in your roll. And hopefully this will look as pretty as I think it will. I don't know. Sometimes the striping just gets too blended. Sometimes it's too thin and it's not contrasting enough. And so then I turn it into something else. It really just depends. But I think it'll make a nice one. So once it's wrapped in this, <laughs> I've got all this extra right here. So I'm just going to chop that up. And chop this side off. Yeah, it's got some pretty good stripes. They're not as vibrant as I, you know, I really like seeing the contrast. But if you start with a cane that's about this thick, so this is about three quarters of an inch to an inch. And I've got, I don't know, about three and a half, four inches here. Um, I know so many of you guys work in centimeters and I am, I'm learning slowly how to like convert inches to millimeters and stuff like that, but it's slow going. Anyway, so I'll leave it like just like this, and then um, just make sure you condition up either some black or white clay, or you could use metallic if you wanted. Some sort of darker color that you're gonna wrap around the outside of this cane. I don't know if you can see those stripes. Let's see, there's a good way to see what's going on here. There, you can see it there. There's the stripes on that side, there's the stripes on that side. Obviously, they're gonna go different throughout the whole cane, which is why I like this cane, because it you don't get the same exact throughout the whole thing. So this this clay right here has just been on my first setting. Or no, this is like setting number two or three. But I'm gonna take this down to a four or five. I don't want it to be super thin because I'm still gonna reduce this and I'm gonna reduce it to a lot of different sizes. So actually, I'll, I might just leave it at this thickness actually. This will probably work great. <clears throat> All right. So and that was just on, this was on a number three. This should be plenty thick. Just place your little guy down. I go, I always go through and just keep piles because I'm always working. I'm all, I use a lot of black and a lot of white, so. I'm just going to slice this through here, put this in a pile that stays with black, slice it off on this side, and then I always pick it up right here, make sure that I'm, I don't have any air, and then I will roll it around, and I'm sure you've seen this in the tutorials before, squish it over. Look at the side, there's the line where I squished it a little bit, and that will help me determine where I need to cut this to match up with the other side. And it should just match right up. I usually try to go a little bit short because I don't want it to overhang. If, if you overhang clay when you wrap clay like this, you'll get a bulge on one side. Not really bulge, but it's not gonna be a perfect circle around the outside of even clay. It's gonna be, there's gonna be like a little lip. And I don't like that. It, those kinds of things bug me. Like I love the organic, but I like to be, or, I like to be able to organize my organicness because <laughs> um, I have this perfectionism issue. So anyways, now I have this nice purpley blue, teal, oceany stuff going on. And I'm just, you know, another thing that I need to get out of the habit of doing is cutting off my ends all the time because I lose so much of my cane, but um, I'm too picky and I don't trust myself enough yet, so I always cut it off to see where I'm at, what it's gonna look like, is everything looking good? Okay, so now I have it about at the size that I want for at least one of the big slices or canes. So I'm gonna take, I'm just gonna roll it out a little bit longer because I, I wanna get as much out of this cane as I can so I don't want to roll it too small yet. I'll take, uh, we'll go with like, I don't know, inch and a half. Okay, and we'll put that there. 
Now you want to make a bunch of different sized canes from the rest of it. So you just roll it out to the next size that you're happy with that you want and you'll want like two canes from this size. Because you want to be able to, I mean there's lots of ways to do this, but you want to be able to mix them up so you get all sorts of different sizes in there. So I'll do, let's see, yeah. I'll do one and two. And then I'll do another one. I'll do three of this one. Husband just got home. Yeah, no, really, this isn't going to last very long. What you got? Oh, you brought Band-Aids. Yay. He takes such good care of me. Fingertip Band-Aids. This, this is too thin right here, I think, for me. So I'm going to squish it back. It doesn't, you don't have to be... Um, too careful with this kind of cane because you're not going to mess up or distort really anything. You can, distortion is fine. So now I've got these thinner ones. I'll make like four of those. And then I'll make one skinny, skinny one just because it offsets it nice. Actually, I can only do three. So I'll do three of the skinnier ones. Stand them all up. You don't have to stand them up. You can do whatever you want if they don't want to stand. At the skinniest part, they start getting really a little too hard to control. I'm even going to take this little guy. I just try to use as much as I can. Let's see, did I miss any more? No, I don't think so. And these little guys are just, you're not going to see any swirls in them at all, really. You're just going to see color difference. And it's just good for variety in getting the different kind of, like, texture. You know, just from the comments that I've seen people on that one that I, that I posted a couple of them that I've made. Only the slab work. I haven't shown anything that I've turned them into. But they make really cute earrings. I just resined a pair today that in like a peachy, um, dusty rose. It was really, really pretty. They'll be in my shop soon, I hope. Seems like nothing ever makes it to my shop because I just get too sidetracked. <laughs> it's pretty terrible. All right, so now I have all these different widths and sizes, not really, I want them all to be the same height, but we'll reduce it a little bit. But anyways, I have all of these, right? And I'm gonna stick them together. So I'm gonna do this, just like that. I'll grab this guy maybe and a really skinny one put that there and put this maybe right here sure why not and put another fat guy over here and sometimes if I have more like I like I said I try to roll out a lot but I did end up cutting off half of that pile that I had so I could have made a much larger cane with this but you get the gist <clears throat> it really just depends on how much scrap you have honestly the only thing that I'm missing so far in this is I wish that I had, I, I should have put more white. The white got blended in pretty quick, so. But that's okay. It'll look good. And I, I don't, I don't try to just go around this big one. Um, I will, like now that I have that there, that would reduce, all right. I think I want another fat guy over here. And for this, you don't really need to worry about filling it. Like in most canes, you want to fill it so it doesn't get distorted. But I can just take and start smushing this down a little bit, just like that. And kind of smush it into a square, just not too quick. You know, you don't want like flat, weird shapes. You want them to stay fairly round, but 
this is going to be kind of just an organic looking cane that looks cool. <laughs> There's, I don't know if I should name it or what, but it's just something I kind of came up with. And I'm sure there's lots of people that do this. I don't know. I, I haven't really noticed, but, um, but yeah, so I'm just getting, I'm reducing it down into a square or rectangle. And I don't want to go too small because I want, I want the detail. So that's probably big enough or small enough for now. And I'll just take and cut it in half. And I don't want to um, line them up where they match. I want them to not be matching. I want to put it so that they don't match at all. Because I want that, I want it when I go to roll it out into like a veneer or whatever, I want to make sure that they are sporadic all over. I'll cut it again. <clears throat> Pull this part and just kind of turn it a little. Turn this maybe that way. Sure, why not? Okay, and then we can smush it again. I feel like using my square for this. I hate it when that happens. Do you guys ever do that where you leave scrap clay on your surface and then you go to squish a cane down and all of a sudden you have a big chunk that you don't want there? Happens to me. It does, it does. All right. The backside doesn't matter at this point because we're not, you know. So I think that's probably going to be as small as I want to go on these guys. And now I'll take this cane, slice it, put them together, roll out a slab, and then I can make earrings or slice long pieces for a bangle bracelet or whatever I want to end up doing. What's nice about this is right now I can't see any white, but once I put it together as a slab and I put the squares together and roll it through the pasta machine, that white should pop back out. It should look more contra contrasting when I get it to where I want it to be. I, I didn't get... This didn't uh, reduce, the black didn't reduce to the edge. You can just gently pull. It's not gonna hurt anything if you just pull your color back over so that you can save, you know, the sides so you don't lose so much clay. Because I really, you know, especially if I like a pattern, I don't wanna, I wanna get as much out of it as I can. I think everybody would want that. So, and I know that you can buy cane ends to help from help prevent distortion when you're reducing. It took me, I'm still terrible at making canes really, and uh, not terrible, but I'm not great at it. And uh, I think it's just because I, I tend to go too quickly. I reduce too fast, so. But anyways, I'm happy with this where it is. I think this will look great. So now I'm gonna cut it, and this time I'm gonna do probably an eighth of an inch slice instead of quarter inch. I definitely don't want the slices to be too thin. I'm not going to make a super thin slice and then lay it on a veneer and all that stuff. I just do this because I personally like my jewelry to look the same on both sides. Sometimes I put it back on just like if I'll put a solid black or something like that. But I am going to cut just the rough outside edge off. I can use that for more scrap later. So I'll just go through and take about that size and just get as many as I can out of it. Oops, that one was a terrible slice, but I can fix it. Still pretty thick. That's pretty good. All right, and then once again, I'm gonna put these together, but I'm not, I do not wanna mirror them. I don't, you do whatever you want, but that's, I like it when it looks more, just like a whole bunch of river rocks or something kind of fell together and turned purple. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. I know my family thinks I am. <laughs> They love me, but I'm nutty. 
oops, I don't want the edges, the black edges to show up too much. And one thing you can do too, is if you don't want any black lines going through the middle like that, you can take and cut the outside of your black off. Once you get the inside black lines in there, you can just cut the black off the outside. I've done that with some cane, with some of these type of canes too. And that looks nice as well. It's just a different look. You don't get any of this black line. But so that's a weird shape to put through the pasta roller. So I will cut this off and put it somewhere else. I'll cut this off. Actually, let's see. I'll end up with my scraps here and see what where I can fit it. One right here. I don't, I got some brown in this. You probably can't see it on the camera, but I didn't like that, so. And I'll just cut the black off on the outside of that one. Stick that in there like that. And that looks pretty good. And then I will take a little piece of paper and I will burnish it because it's gonna be really lumpy. I mean, I, I honestly don't care if my slices are even. It doesn't matter on this one, I really don't care. So I'll burnish it a little bit. I use this, this is my silhouette scraper for scraping stuff off of my silhouette mat after I cut things. And it works great for burnishing. But you just want your slices to stick together. And then you'll send it through on your thickest setting in your pasta roller and be pretty much good. You can decide if you want to take it down any thinner after that. Um, sometimes if I want the, the little circles or the spirals or whatever to be bigger, I'll fold it in half and throw it through the pasta machine and it just gets kind of really distorted and warped, but the, some of them have turned out really cool. And the clay is very warm right now, so it's super sticky. But this is what it looks like before it's going into the pasta machine. Okay, and I'm gonna just set it, set it through on my thickest setting to start with. And because I think I'm gonna get more out of it if I try to, if I go down this way this time. So I'm gonna run it through the pasta machine widthwise. this black off right here. I don't want that it's getting all widened. Okay, so that's once on my thickest setting and this was already fairly thin, so I need, I'm gonna need to take it down. But this is like where it didn't get burnished well enough, so that's kind of coming apart a little bit. Take off some of the black before you squish and that way you get rid of any of those black lines. that you can just cut the outside off So for me, when I go push this through, because I'm taking off just some of the thicker black, um, I'll still have the black lines in between. It's just not gonna be on the front so fat, that's all. So now I'll go down to setting number two. I, mine goes from zero to nine, and I will go down to setting number two. So I'll go from zero to two right now, because going to one doesn't really do much. And I'll see where it's at, at two, and if I like it there, then I'll leave it. Still not thin enough yet. So with this one, because it was I started out smaller, I'm gonna have to put a back and then run it through so that um, I can get more out of the slab. So I'll just take a whole bunch of this, and well, maybe I'll save that for another scrap day. And maybe I'll just use black. That sounds good. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be very thick to help it spread better. You just need a little more bulk when you start getting down too thin and you want to make it bigger. You want it to spread out more. You just need to add some sort of width thickness to the clay. Uh, 
that should be okay. Just make sure I have enough to cover the whole thing and I'll cut off the excess. take some from the edge and cut, put it underneath the parts that didn't get any black just so the whole back is good and if I do it well then I don't have, I have to worry about any of the back looking good because the back of these aren't going to look as nice as the front because you lined up your slices you know kind of haphazardly and it doesn't it doesn't translate all the way through this is this is not the typical you know, precise cane that you're going to get the same look all the way through. Um, <clears throat> I mean, for the most part you do, but it depends on how good you get your stripes. That is what matters the most. So I'm just putting that on the corner there, fold that back out. Let's send this through and so I'll, I'll keep this I'll do this on a number one just because now I got quite a bit of clay here so this should roll out uh, thicker but I'm gonna put it lengthwise this time because I'm, I'm seeing that my circles are getting really flat and wide so if you just run it through the opposite direction that will um, help elongate it a little bit get it back to a good nice round shape and I'll probably go down one more size and then I'll be happy and then I'm good. And I'll clean it with some alcohol and show you how it really cleans up nicely once you rub it off a little bit. One of the things that I don't like is if I do go too thin, sometimes you'll get a little blurring. Like most of them are nice and sharp and clean and then there's a couple areas down here that, that the stripes are getting blurry. Oftentimes once it's baked and I go to sand it, all that blur goes away. And sometimes it goes away just by wiping it with alcohol in a baby wipe. But yeah, essentially that's all you do. And then you're good to go. And in another tutorial, I'll show you how I do the Bargello and the, um, that square. 3D square cane thing. Those are really easy too. I've done about 20 of them though and none of them have turned out perfect so I keep practicing. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just rubbing this a little bit just to clean up that surface area a little. And then I will show you. And the back looks nice, the black. So once this is baked, it'll look, you know, it'll be good and I won't have to worry about the back at all. But yeah, ta-da. I love, I, I like the color periwinkle and that's what this reminds me of a little bit. It's more like a periwinkle blue. And I, it would have looked great with white um, surrounding instead of black. I just, I don't know, for winter, I guess maybe the, the contrast is what I like, so. Anyways, I hope this was helpful and I hope you try your own scrappy clay spiral cane. Have a great day, bye.